Hey guys, Greg here. Let's solve remove duplicates from sorted array, leak code number 26. So we're given an integer array called nums and it's sorted in non-decreasing order. That's basically just ascending order. And we need to remove the duplicates in place. So in the object you were given such that each unique element appears only once. The relative order of the elements should be kept the same. And then you need to return the number of unique elements in nums. Now I think it's not really worth reading this. We can just jump to the example here. So nums is one one two we want to return the value of two because we have two unique numbers we have one and we have two and we want to adjust the array so that we remove the duplicates and we want to keep the order of the elements the same and what's left over at the end here really doesn't matter say it was a zero or a one or a two you can have whatever you want at the end so just remove the duplicates keep the order of the elements the same and return the unique number of elements that you have let's see that with this example here so notice it is sorted in ascending order we have five different numbers so we have 0 1 2 3 and 4 and so we're just going to have those numbers in order we remove all of their duplicates and we can leave whatever else we want in the array here at the end okay so let's say we were given this array right here well we could calculate that it has 10 many elements so we could get n is equal to 10 and we're going to place two indices i and j both at the first index now i is going to scan through the array and check for duplicates and j is going to be in charge of setting or overriding the element that it is. And we can get away with not even looking at the first position because of course you want to keep this thing. Like it's the first position. You want to remove the duplicates that come after it. And so you don't even need to worry about that first position. Okay, then basically what we do here is we compare i with i minus one. That's how you know we have a duplicate. So what we're going to do is just increment i. And now we compare one with zero. We see they are different. And so we have a unique element. In that case, we know that this is supposed to be whatever i i is. And so this next thing is supposed to be a one. So we overwrite it with that. Now J's job is to overwrite the array. And so whenever it places something at itself, we're going to increment J and we're going to increment I on every iteration, no matter what. Now these two are duplicates. So we keep it going. These two are duplicates. We keep it going. Okay. The next unique thing is going to be a two. So we're going to overwrite this to be a two. When we do that, we shift over J, we shift over I, we see that we already have twos. Okay. We're not going to use those we go over we see a three okay that's a new number so we want this to be a three we shift over j we shift over i that's not a new number and so we shift i over until it gets a new number okay the last thing we wanted was a four we override that we increment j we increment i and we conclude so what we'd see here is this is all garbage so we don't care about that we really just care about this part of the array and so we see that we have all the unique elements there so that's correct but now we need to know how many unique elements we have. Well, take a look here. If the indexes are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, well, J is stopped on 5. And we have, ta-da, five many things here. So the reason that worked out and that's always going to work out is because, well, J starts at one saying we have, you know, one unique thing so far at the beginning. And then whenever we got a unique element, well, that's when we shift J over. And so it's actually going to be the same exact number as the number of unique elements at the end. Okay. So this is going to have a time complexity of big O of N. We're really just sending two indexes through the array. And the space complexity of this is totally constant because we just use two indices. Okay, so let's code this solution up. Okay, so I absolutely love this code. We get n is equal to the length of nums. We're going to set j equal to the index of one because you know you want to keep what's at index zero. Then for i in the range of one to n, so it's going to start at index one and go through the array. Now, if nums at i is not equal to nums at i minus one, this means that we do not have a duplicate. When we don't have a duplicate, we want to set nums at j equal to be nums at i. And we are happy to increment j. Now, amazingly, this is actually all the code that there is. We're just going to keep setting nums at j to be equal to nums at i whenever we don't have a duplicate. And if we do have a duplicate, well, that would be basically in an else block, but we don't need to do anything with that because all you would want to do is increment i in that case. And almost amazingly, you can just return j because that's going to be the number of elements that are unique. Okay, so this is going to have a time complexity of big O of n. You can see just a for loop through i and we occasionally increment j and it's going to have a space complexity of totally constant o of one okay if you were to run this this is going to pass our cases that's going to pass all our test cases very quickly as well okay so i hope this was helpful check out algomap.io in the description if you haven't already and have a great day guys Bye bye